Hey y'all, come on in here. We got a lot to talk about today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a word in here. There is a word in here. There is a word in here. This month is your month of renewal. You've been holding on to some old things and this month is your month of renewal. This month is representing a month where you need to let some things go. Welcome back to another episode of More Money Monday. Hey y'all. It is not too late to join the challenge. DM me the word challenge to join. I'm gonna keep the doors open until class starts tonight. So we will definitely talk about the challenge as well. Hey. But I feel really called to have this conversation with you all because I just want you to comment me in the chat or comment yes in the chat if you feel like you're going through a change, if you feel like you're going through a transition, comment yes in the chat. Comment yes in the chat, comment me in the chat if you feel like you're going through a change, if you feel like you're going through a transition. Because, you know, this is an interesting month and it's August, the number of August is eight, right? And what's even more like important about this is eight signifies renewal, right? Eight signifies growth, it signifies newness. Um, it's also the number turned sideways that signifies infinity, right? So there's so much here and I need you to know that if you've been feeling like it's time for something new, then you need to lean into that. I just listened to a video like five minutes ago before I came on for More Money Monday right now. And what it said is, if you are feeling less connected to the things you normally do, right? If, if the things that used to make you happy don't make you happy anymore. If the people you used to talk to, those conversations don't light you up anymore. If whatever you're doing for work doesn't bring that uh, out of you anymore. If the places you go don't make you feel the way it used to feel, you have to recognize that that's a sign. That's your intuition. That's your God voice telling you those things no longer serve you. And you see, sometimes we're afraid to connect to something new. Sometimes we're afraid of renewal. We're afraid of doing something new because we don't know if the new thing will replace what we know we need to let go of. We know that we don't enjoy it anymore. We know that we don't really like this person anymore. We know that we don't really want to go to those places anymore. We know we don't really want those habits anymore. We know we don't really want to have the business that we have anymore, right? We know we want to make a change, but because we're comfortable with those places, we're comfortable with those people, the business makes us money or the job makes us money, we're afraid to let go of it and be renewed because we don't believe that the new cup will be fuller than the one that we have. But what I want you to understand is this, you have to trust that feeling. What is God sent? What is for you? What is going to ultimately make you more money? What is going to ultimately make you more happy? What is going to ultimately give you more in life? is not going to give you the ick. If you have the ick, if you have a feeling of not feeling settled about what you're doing or who you're talking to or where you're going or what you're around, you need to trust that feeling because when it's sent from God, it feels good. When it's sent from God, it feels right. And this message is so timely even for me, right? This, the fact that I'm speaking this 
is like God answering my own prayer right now. Because we get so conditioned to doing the same thing over and over and over again, even though we really don't think it feels right and it's not really giving us a different result, but because it's giving us the same uh, the same result, right? The same response, the same reaction, the one that we're used to, we are so afraid to do something different because we're stuck in a lack mentality. A lot of us are stuck in lack, but God doesn't operate in lack. Your destiny, your purpose, all the great things that are going to come from you, those things don't operate in lack. Those things operate in abundance. I want everyone to comment the word renewal in the chat. Comment the word renewal in the chat because this is what we have to realize. So much of the time we want a different outcome, but we're staying in the same place, right? You're praying for more success. You're hoping for a different relationship. You want to live in a new place. You want to have different friends. You want to have different relationships. You want to have different experiences. You want to have these things, but you're frequenting, right? We're frequenting the same habits. We're frequenting the same circles. And so when you really think about it, it's crazy. It's a little bit crazy. We might have been being a little crazy, sis, right? You've been being a little crazy, okay? Because you're wanting something new, but you're doing the same old stuff. You're wanting new results, but you're doing the same old things. And here's the thing about renewal, right? I was looking at the word, the definition of renewal earlier. So I'm going to pull it up again so we can read it. Here's the thing about renewal. Renewal happens also from the inside out, right? So in order for something to be renewed, it has to be fully and completely cleansed. It has to be fully renewed, right? You cannot want to renew something, but also hold on to the old. You know, wait, I want to do this new thing, but let me also just, just hold on to this. Because how can God bless you? How can God give you what you're asking for if you will not let go of the things that he doesn't want you to have anymore? And, you know, we started my challenge yesterday. And one of the women in my challenge is currently going through a divorce. And, of course, divorces are never easy. So she's just really feeling how the divorce and her business trying to do both is a challenge. And what I spoke to her, what I spoke into her yesterday is I said, you know what? Sometimes things have to end in order for you to have a new beginning. Don't look at things so much as an end of something. Look at them as a beginning of something else. But we're afraid to see the end. But it's really not the end. Right? It's just like when we turn a chapter. It's just like when you turn the page. You have to close one chapter in order to start the next one. You have to close one book in order to open another one. Does that mean there's anything wrong with closing it? No, but this is growth. This is moving forward. This is advancement. And so the way that we connect all of this into your into your business, right? So I meant to tell you guys renewal. The replacement or repair of something, the state or process of being made spiritually new. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The act of extending the period of validity of a license, subscription, or contract, right? So that's like the very technical term. But the one that is key here is the replacement or repair of something. So you need to look at what in your life do you need to replace? Everybody comment the word replace in the chats. <laughs> comment the word replace because let me tell you something. You are the CEO of your life. You are the CEO of your life. So when things are not in alignment, whether that's in your business, your friendships, your relationships, your home life, the way that you feel, the way that you look, whatever it is, you are the CEO. So it is your job and it is your responsibility to hire, fire, and promote accordingly. 
So if someone is not up to the expectation that you need, they have to be replaced. This is your responsibility. God made you the CEO of your life to make decisions here. God is guiding you. That's what that intuition is. That's what that gut is. You have to make the decisions according to those feelings that you have. Because if you don't, then you are putting someone else's feelings. You're putting the need to make someone else comfortable. You're putting the need to keep your same routines. You're feeling the need to validate your fears. You're putting all of that above the destiny that you actually have lined up that God is trying to get you to but you need to go ahead and be the CEO of your life and make the decisions required and replace the people that need to be replaced. I know I'm talking to somebody today. I know I'm talking to somebody today. I know somebody needs this message because I really need it. I need you all to realize that everything that you want is right on the other side of you making that decision that you're afraid to make. Only you know what that decision is. But there's a reason that you're feeling called to do that thing, but your fear is telling you not to do it because you don't know what's going to come. You've never made a decision like that before, but I'm telling you, every time you have that feeling, every time you're afraid to see what's behind the door, that what is behind the door is what is going to change your life. What is behind the door is what God has waiting for you. You're going to have to step outside of that fear and step into your faith and recognize that this right now is the season of renewal. Because let's really break it down a step further, right? We know that August is the eighth month and the number eight represents, you know, uh, infinity, life, and renewal, right? This year is 2027, 2023, I'm sorry. And those numbers in 2023 add up to seven. Next year is 2024. And the numbers in 2024 add up to eight. So if you're feeling this renewal energy this month, mm -hmm, imagine what is going to happen next year. And so what I want you to do is decide from right now to be prepared because you can either make the decision to renew and make changes and replace and let go of the old right now, or it can be stripped from you because God is like, you know what, sis, I can't keep waiting for you. And this is what I feel like happened to me when I got my divorce in 2020, you know, I knew for a long time. That, that feeling in my spirit was like, Ellie, this is, not, this is not home. Thank God for the children that you have, but it's time to go. This, 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 this ain't it. This, mm, this is not giving what it's supposed to give. Time to go. And for years, I felt that. For years. But I just kept being like, no. Mm, well, I don't know. I'll be a single mom. Maybe I won't, you know, find a man again. What am I going to do? You know, all the fears that we let consume us. We don't leave our jobs because we're like, well, no, I might not get another job with these benefits. Well, no, I might not get another man to do. K -k 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 -k. So I just kept staying and staying and staying. And God was like, oh, okay. 2020 came. Smack me in my damn head. Everything was gone. House, had to move out. A car, repossessed. Lost my job. Divorced, okay? Moved back to my mom's house on EBT. Uh, you know, applied to 55 jobs. Couldn't get a job. I mean, dang. And so... Looking at God like, really? You had to do it like that? Dang, you couldn't just give me a little more time? But see, this is what I need you to understand. God is not going to keep waiting for you. When you have an assignment, when you have a destiny, when there is a purpose on your life, which there is a purpose on your life, at a certain point, God is going to be like, look, you're not moving, so I'm going to have to move for you. I'm going to have to move you. 
So this is what I'm telling you. This feeling that you're having right now to shift, to move directions, to rebrand, to, you know, maybe it's end a relationship. Maybe it's end a friendship. Maybe it's changed some habits, right? This feeling that you're having, you need to lean into it because by force or by grace, God is going to make sure that you get moved into where you need to be moved into. And you don't want to have to wait until it happens in such a way where everything is taken from you at one time. I know mine had to happen like that because God knows I'm a little hard headed. You know, I just be doing things my way. I'm a little hard headed. So he had to do that. And thank God we got it together because look at me now, right? Started the business. Everything is, you know, everything is great. But don't be hard-headed like me. Don't be hard-headed about your destiny. Don't be hard-headed because I think I could, I would have still ended up where I am right now. But maybe I might have ended up here a little bit sooner had I listened to that intuition, to that God voice that he was sending me years ago. So I'm telling you before you get smacked upside the head, listen to the God voice that is there right now. If you're not feeling connected to the business that you're working on, look at what can you change. If you're feeling like there's something more you want to do, but you're afraid because you've never done it, I want you to lean in. Everybody comment lean in in the chat. I want you to lean into that. I want you to write down tonight the highest version of yourself that you see, the grandest vision, the best life, all the things that you could imagine yourself doing that if you did not have to worry about failing, if you didn't have to worry about fear, if you didn't have to worry about what anybody thought of you, I want you to write down what is that grandest, highest, godliest version and vision that you have of your life. And that is what I want you to focus on achieving 1000%. Because when we have that feeling that something is not serving us, it is God telling us there's more for you. Everybody comment in the chat, there's more for me. Comment in the chat, there is more for me. See, I was feeling it about my job, about my marriage, about all the things, but I was afraid. I was afraid to leave because I had two kids at the time. So then I went and had two more kids. I had twins. And six months after having those twins, maybe even less, four or five months, God said, okay, you've been hard-headed enough. It's over. Wipe, complete wipeout. No car, no money, no job, no house to call my own, living in my mom's house. Like y'all know the story, right? So you've got to look at right now, where is that intuition? What is it telling you? And realize that if you're having the idea, if you're having the feeling, if that grandest vision of your life, if you're able to even process it, if you're able to even envision it, then what I need you to know is that it's possible for you. God is not going to allow you to have a vision over your life that he has not written. God is not going to plant a seed of what you can possibly have in your life if it's not for you. God is not going to make you uncomfortable with the life you're living now if there's not a bigger life destined for you. He's not going to make you unsatisfied unless there is something else that is more appealing. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are going to be fully in love with what you have right now if that is all you are meant to have. But if there's a calling, if you feel a sense of more, if you feel a sense of want, if you feel a sense of dissatisfaction and not ungratitude, right? But something that tells you there's more for you. This is not it. These Friends are not it. These hobbies are not it. This relationship is not it. I do not feel I am in my 100% godliness right now. Then you've got to know it's because God has something more out there for you. God has something more promised for you. And the craziest thing about it 
and I put this on my threads the other day, fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Most of the time, it's not that people aren't achieving their dreams because they tried and they failed. It's that they're not achieving their dreams because they were too afraid to try. So when we see people who are bitter or upset or feel like they have a sense of regret over what was not achieved, it's not because they tried it and it didn't work. It's because they were too afraid to push the limit. They were too afraid to do something different. They put their fear above their faith and therefore they never got to achieve anything. I don't want you to be afraid of failure because with God, you cannot fail. Let me say that again because I just need to make sure y'all really picking this up. I do not want you to be afraid of failure because with God, you cannot fail. You cannot fail. It's not, a, it's not a failure. Every time something just doesn't work, it's a lesson. It's a diversion. It's God saying, mm, don't go that way. Let's go this way instead. And I want really to inspire you all to let's change our outlook on life, right? You know, I'm really feeling like I'm in a renewal too, sis, because ever since getting here to Senegal, you guys know, if you don't know, I live in Senegal now. I'm at our home um, in my little home office. Okay, it's real cute. I will be posting some updates. I've just been trying to like get my new content scheduled together. But I'm living in Senegal. I have like moved out of the U.S. for now. I'm going to come back eventually, but we are living full time here in our beautiful five bedroom, five bathroom apartments, um, indoor pool, like walking distance to the school. Everything is amazing. I'll tell you guys more about it on a girl talk. But I really do feel I'm going through this sense of renewal because what I want you guys to understand that I'm seeing about life is that you can have whatever you want. You can design a life that is perfectly suited to you, right? And, and God will help you make it happen. God, God put us here to be joyous, to have the things that we want. You know, we consume ourselves with the idea of something not working, but I want you to shift your mindset and say instead, Instead of what if it doesn't work, I want you to ask yourself, well, what if it does? What if my business does sell out? What if I get all the customers? What if it works? There's a thought. Instead of the fear that takes over and says, well, what if you don't do anything? And what if nobody buys? And what if nobody likes your content? And what if... What, 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 you see, God doesn't operate in that. I instead want you to think in the realm of possibilities instead of negativities. I want you to lean into what is possible. Right? When we think about a renewal, we don't think about renewing something just to say, well, what if it doesn't grow back? Well, what if it, you know, uh, what if, uh, anxiety? Mm mm. Mm mm. No. No. What if it does work? What if you do get everything you want? What if you do make that sale? What if you do sign those clients? Mm -hmm. What if you do go viral? What if you do get that chocolate man? What if you do? Is it, that, is, that is what God wants for you. Don't let this negativity and these negative people because of the fact that they refuse to believe in possibilities don't let them take your spirit away 
any these these feelings that you're having around wanting change around wanting to do something different your spirit is trying to tell you that it does not align with the things that you're doing i'm, I'm gonna keep saying this i need you to lean in and listen to that and don't be afraid and you know even when it comes to me right i have been wanting to shift my content right i want to talk more about life and relationships and you know really just mindset right i want to talk to you all more about these things but i've been afraid i'm like well i'm ellie talks money i should only talk about money but one thing i'm realizing is money is important but money without mindset and clarification and peace is nothing. As a community of women and black women, as much as we need money, we also need healing. As much as we need money, we also need belief in ourselves. As much as we need money, we also need these types of conversations. We need girl talks. We need vision boards. We need affirmations. We need reminding of what is possible, right? We need to rediscover who we are on the inside and not because men on podcasts tell us to be more feminine or women who don't have husbands tell us what we need to do or not do to get a man, but we really need this side, right? And so I have been feeling like, but how do I go there? Because I've never been there. But God is telling you the same way he's telling me, trust in my plan, trust in your feeling. I can still have Ellie Talks Money and still develop Ellie Talks Life or Ellie Talks Love or Ellie Talks Relationships, or Ellie Talks Healing, right? All of those things can still come. So I want you guys to know, I'm feeling it too. That what, what I'm talking about today, this renewal, this, this need, this desire to push forward, to lean in, to let go of what is no longer in alignment in order to embrace what is in alignment, I'm feeling it too. And you know, I learned my lesson from the last time. I'm not gonna let God smack me on the head again. Uh-uh, mm-mm, no. So this time I'm like, okay, God, I hear you. I see what you're telling me. All right, I'm doing it. Just hold on. Don't, don't, don't. I know I can be hard-headed. Go easy on me. I'm coming, okay? Don't. Don't make a fool out of me, please. Just give me some time, okay? <laughs> Don't do what you did to me in 2020. I can't handle another 2020. Please, just hold on. That's why when God told me I needed to move to Senegal, I said, okay, hold on. All right, let's start getting things packed up. Okay, we're going. Yes, I hear you. I'm following. Please don't smack me in the head. We're going, let's go. Follow the assignment, follow your assignment, y'all. Follow your assignment, follow your assignment. That voice is real. That feeling you have is real, right? When it comes to your business, you have to feel connected to what you're doing. And this is why I, I always tell you guys to write your business plans, right? Not only because it helps you get funding, but it helps you to write out, what are you doing? What do you care about? What does this business mean? Where do you see it going in five years? This is what allows you to stay connected to it, to really see it as real. So like I said, yesterday in the challenge, that was our business plan class. We wrote business plans, we did your pitch decks, we have all these templates, your business plan template, executive summary template, like it was amazing. Um, but I really hope you guys are picking up the message that I gave you today. Comment got it if you got it. Comment got it if you got this message because I really feel a shift and, you know, I just want all of us to lean in, right? I'm feeling it in my own life and in my own business and I want you to know that what if it does work out? Don't, don't go into this season of renewal 
with more fear than faith. Don't go into this season feeling like, well, you know, uh, because that's the enemy and that's negativity. And let me tell you something. If there's anybody in your life who is brooding those feelings, who is making you remember or reminding you what if it doesn't work, what if it fails, don't talk to them about it. I wanna tell you guys, even for my move to Senegal, my parents didn't understand, right? They were supportive, but they were like, mm, mm. And you know, we're grown, right? So I had to know, okay, God, I know that you're having me make a decision that a lot of people might not understand. So help me get the details together so that I can just execute. Sometimes you have to just do it and talk about it when it's done. The feelings that you're having, the, the desire to do something different, don't announce it, just make the move. Don't announce the shift. Just make the shift because when you announce it, it gives the enemy an opportunity to hop on your plans. It gives the enemy an opportunity to come and say, oh, where are you going? Come over here. Don't do it. Let me let me spit some ne negativity into your ear. Let me change your mind. Let me say this. Let me say that. Mm -mm. Move in silence. Renew in silence. Separate in silence. Let's say that again. Move in silence. Renew in silence. Separate in silence. Because once you're already gone, once you've already made the move, once you've already started to shed, they cannot touch you. You're already, you're already in the new realm. You're already in the new area. You've already gone into the next book. You've already gone into the next chapter. Move in silence, renew in silence, separate in silence. Don't, don't start talking about what you're going to do differently to people who don't understand. Just start doing it differently. Just start doing it differently. Just sit down one day, come to the challenge and just write your business plan. Don't talk about it with someone who doesn't understand Come into the room with me and write your business plan. Start thinking about the different ways that you want to market your business. Start thinking about how you want to brand yourself. Write down that amazing, big, delusional vision of your life. And don't talk about it. Don't share it with anybody because it's your vision. And God is going to bring the right person who you are meant to share it with. That's what's going to happen. God is going to bring the right person who you are meant to share it with. Move in silence, renew in silence, and separate in silence. Y'all need to be in a challenge, okay? Because uh, y'all know, if you've ever been in any of my classes, if I'm telling you about something, we already had the business plan class. It was amazing, and I'm not just saying that because I taught it, but like, it was fantastic. We had our guest speakers on the pitch decks. I just want to create spaces where you guys can have trust and know that when you invest in yourself, when you join a class, that you are going to grow. You know, if you know me by now, you know about my brands. I am so serious about my community. And if I would not love it, I would not give it to you. If it would not be up to my standards, I would not give it to you. If it would not help me write my own business plan, I would not give it to you. So y'all need to be in class, okay? We have our next class tonight, and then we have the challenge all throughout the rest of the week. So you're getting last night, Sunday, which was business plans and pitch decks. Tonight we have class, tomorrow we're doing real estate, then e-commerce and drop shipping, then trust funds, then passive income for your kids, and then taxes. So it's a full week. It's your renewal season. There's nothing better than to spend these next six days gathering new information, reframing your mind so that you can have a completely different next six months, right? Let's not wait until January 1st, 2024 to try to get it together. Take it from me. Get it together right now. Comment now in the chat. I want you to get it together right now. Use these next five days, six days of this challenge 
to renew, to, to plant new seeds, to reframe your mind, to meet people, right? We have a Mommy Millionaire group chat. It's amazing. Hundreds of people in there just giving to each other. So if you've been needing new friends or new support or new accountability, you need to be in the room. God answers prayers in multiple ways. And I really hope that our conversation was an answered prayer for you today. And I also know that joining the challenge is also going to be an answered prayer for you. Because if you've been needing an answer to a question, come to the challenge so you can get the answer to that question. Okay, so I want you guys to DM me the word challenge. You can still join. Um, you'll get all your replays and we have class tonight at 7 Eastern. Or you can go straight to the link in my bio and secure your seat. We have about six seats left before the door is like officially closed because we started yesterday. So grab those last six seats, okay? I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's More Money Monday. Mm -mm -mm. Is your renewal season? Renew in silence. Move in silence. Separate in silence, okay? If you need to, come to the challenge in silence. Some people might not understand you spending six days to change your life, but just go ahead and get in the room. Get in the room. Get in the room. Get in the room, okay? There's about 180, 50 of y'all in here, and we have six seats left for class for the rest of the challenge. So remember, you have lifetime access to every single... Uh, day of class. So yesterday, today, and the rest of the week, get in the room, especially so you can get these business plan templates. Love y'all. Bye.